Greetings and welcome to the new Calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. So, uh, pursuant to previous videos, I want to discuss more of the new Calculus with you and to explain to you that uh, basically even the chat, you know, the chatbots have been pre-trained <clears throat> uh, in a biased way towards me. So. This is Bard that I'm talking to, and I, I ask it, or I prompt it to explain the new calculus to me, and this is how it responds. It says a controversial approach. Actually, there's nothing controversial about the new calculus, as you'll find out shortly. And in fact, I think there's no better time to find out than now. So let's look at it quickly. So, okay. Now, uh, before I come back to this <clears throat> screen, let's look at this one. So the derivative definition is given by what you see over here in front of you, okay? And what this means is very simply this, that if you have a, let's just make that bigger. If you have a curve like that, okay, and a tangent line there, okay, pretend it's a tangent line like that, that um, you can have a parallel secant to that tangent line. And the only time that's not possible is if this is an inflection point. And guess what? It doesn't matter because the mean value theorem, which is the reason all of calculus works, doesn't care about inflection points. Okay. So if we call that C, then the new calculus derivative is defined using this using this uh, definition. So we say that this is c plus n, which means that this distance here is n, and this is c minus m, which means this distance here is m. And one of the beautiful things about the new calculus is that there is an auxiliary equation involved. So to find the derivative at C, we use the mean value theorem, which simply states f of x plus n minus f of x minus m over m plus n. This distance here is m plus n. And of course, there is there is another way of writing this, and of course I should have written the f of x because I'm referring to the point of tangency generally. I could have just called this x and these x. It doesn't really matter. Okay, and <clears throat> so what we have here now is the definition of the derivative. But inside this finite difference quotient, we have, we have, the de we have the derivative and the auxiliary equation, okay? Now, th well, the auxiliary equation is just really when this expression here equals zero. Now, let's explain what that means. So this is in fact the slope difference between this line and the tangent line, okay? It's a slope difference. It's gotta be zero because common geometry tells us that parallel lines have the same slope. And if they have the same slope, let's say a slope of k, then uh, the difference between slope k and k is, yeah, zero. So there is some use for zero, isn't there? Everybody thought I hated zero. <laughs> well, guess you were wrong. Now, so this is what the derivative definition is in the new calculus, and you'll see it over here. See, the top line here. Okay. Now, from this definition, we also derive the definition of the definite integral, okay? And the definite integral is simply this. It's just simply f of x plus n minus f of x minus m, which is equal to x minus m, x plus n of f prime of x dx, but that's not how it's derived in the new calculus, okay? The new calculus, it would be this left-hand side 
would equal to what? It would equal to m plus n multiplied, multiplied by this whole thing here. f prime of x plus q x m n. Okay, so this here is equal to the integral in mainstream. All right. So now a lot of morons in the mainstream will say, well, how can we prove that out of this expression here, we will get, we'll get f prime of x and this expression, which is a slope difference? Well, let's look at it. Let's look at it quickly. New. Okay. So, well, we know that the expression is this. Okay. This is the expression. So let's take any straight line. And it doesn't matter that we take any straight line, does it? Because if we have a tangent line like that in a parallel secant, there is a line going through that parallel secant. So let, let that line just be y is equal to kx plus, let's say, d. Okay? Then, if we use this definition here, we'll see now that the values of m and n are not part of the derivative expression. Okay? Let's see how. It's very easy. So we'll have k, x plus n, right? plus d minus on the top k x minus m plus d all over m plus n right so what does that give us that gives us kx plus kn plus d minus kx plus k m minus d all over m plus n, right? Now we cancel out terms which don't belong, and we end up with k, this term and this term. So it's k m plus n over m plus n. And guess what? The, the uh, distances n and m that you saw here, m and n, have no effect on the slope okay so the the expression will not contain any m and n for the derivative so that's one of the things that stupid people like marcus cliver or zealous malam or jean pierre massager or professor gilbert strang or jack hazinger uh, from ex harvard alumnus they'll argue along those lines but they're morons and so I'm explaining to you in a very simple proof here, and I'm showing you what the proof is. I showed you take any straight line, okay? Doesn't matter which one it is. And M and N are not part of the derivative, okay? And this works for any smooth function that you have. So now let's go back to our diagram here. Now the new calculus derivative that I showed you, uh, def or the integral rather, is also equal to this middle term expression which uh, has f prime of mu sub s that is equal to this okay so it works with the mean value theorem all the time okay there's no use of infinitesimals or infinity or riemann sums or any of that drivel all right so let's go back to the conversation so it says that it's characterized by rejection of certain foundational concepts in mainstream calculus such as limit to infinity well yes it is because those are all garbage concepts that i have proved over and over again to be flawed and to have serious logical problems okay so it says let's look at the key points that it says of the new calculus it says rejection of limits yes it does reject limits Okay, and it says proposes a method involving finite differences and algebraic manipulation, whatever drivel that means. Um, I don't even know that, you know, the mainstream even have an idea what that means. Then the redefinition of derivatives. Okay, that's true because they are redefined, but 
it's not just without using limits and focusing on a finite difference quotient. It uses the mean value theorem, okay? And the mean value theorem is the reason your calculus works. Without the mean value theorem, you cannot use calculus, okay? And you cannot use the mean value theorem unless you have a smooth function. Does that make sense? That means you can toss everything out of the window unless you have a smooth function. So, and then it says controversy. It has been met with significant criticism because it's of its departure from, uh, quote, well-established and rigorous, rigorously tested foundations. Obviously a load of crap because that's not true. And so they argue that my approach lacks rigor and may lead to inconsistencies or incorrect results. And that is absolute nonsense because they've never shown any inconsistencies or lack of, of rigor or incorrect results. So the, about the only thing that is true is the first one here, that it rejects limits. And here are the main crit criticisms all over again. Lack of rigor, inconsistencies, which nobody's ever pointed out any inconsistencies. Uh, they've tried, but there haven't really been any. The most common one is uh, there are no derivatives at points of inflection. That's not an inconsistency. That's 100% correct and, and as it should be. And it's not a problem because the mean value theorem doesn't care about derivatives at points of inflection. And then, of course, lack of peer review. That's the funniest one because uh, I think it's had a lot of peer review and they're all idiots. Now, you can only have somebody review your work if they're at least close to your level of intelligence and above. I don't have any peers. So, you know, if you had to tell Newton that his work needed to be reviewed by his peers, he'd, he'd say, which peers? <laughs> he didn't have anybody on his level. He was the smartest guy around at that time. Same for Archimedes, same for all the other great mathematicians. Okay. So, it says, while it presents an interesting alternative, it has not gained widespread ex acceptance due to its controversial nature and the significant challenges it faces in terms of rigor. That's just so unfortunate because that is 100%, 100% false, okay? So, and my response to that is it's ironic that they claim it lacks rigor when I've shown that mainstream calculus has never been rigorous. And as for the new calculus, I asked, uh, Bard, if it even knows what the definition is. And then, of course, Bard suddenly starts cowering because all it's done really is just repeat the drivel that it finds on Quora and Reddit and all those other bullshit sites which are mainstream run. Okay. So ultimately, I have a little back and forth. And basically, there's no reason for me to try and convince Bard because I have convinced it quite a few times in the past. And also all the other AIs have come around to, uh, you know, basically not being able to refute what I say, but they start off in the same approach as Bard. Okay. So the new calculus, my friends, is <clears throat> the first rigorous formulation in human history doesn't contain any of ill form concepts and it's based on geometry. And if it's based on geometry, I mean, what is there to prove? <laughs> you can't refute geometry. Geometry is 100% sound. I mean, how stupid is this to say, uh, to ask me, how do you know there are parallel secant lines to the tangent line? Well, that was proved over 2000 years ago. <laughs> you can construct a parallel line to any other line through a point not on the line. Okay. And the only exception there is inflection points, which is not a problem. So stupid queries like that are what I've been getting from these knuckle draggers in the mainstream. And, you know, and, and the one that I showed you earlier with the, with the fact that M and N, you know, play no role in the derivative, you end up getting the derivative expression and uh, Q of Q of X M N is equal to zero. So if there are any terms that contain M or N or both, you can just basically ignore those terms because if you sum them up, if you sum them up, they'll equal to zero. 
Okay, so it's the same as writing this expression plus Q of X M N or writing this expression without Q of X M N. And it's as simple as that. So if you're not already a subscriber, become a subscriber to my channel. Okay, this is my channel over here. And make sure you click on join because if you become a monthly subscriber for just 4.99 euros you get access to a lot more than i share with the public and trust me you'll be blown away if you're really interested in learning why mathematics works what are the uh, real reasons that you can do arithmetic that you can do all the things that you do in mathematics you'll really find that there is no other source from where you can learn these things. Very well then, I'm John Gabriel and this is a new calculus channel. Till next time, goodbye.